Hello, researchers. As I told you in the last video, uh, let's see what is systematic literature review, how to conduct that. Let me give you the step-by-step -step guidance in this video. Systematic literature review compared to traditional uh, narrative literature review it is so methodical and it's so systematic and uh, you will get a, uh, 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 the data in a very highly systematic manner. There are seven steps in conducting systematic literature review. Uh, number one, first step is identifying the research question or questions clearly, because based on the research questions only, you have to conduct the literature review. Number one, identify research question or questions. Number two, decide inclusion and exclusion criteria. That means how to include, what are the things uh, you have to include, what are the things you need to exclude. And third thing, design the keywords. What are the keywords you want to use to search in the search engine? Fourth one, search the literature. Search the literature means what are the databases you wanted to search, for example, like Scopus, Web of Science, Eric, ProQuest, the Google Scholar, like that. What are the things you are deciding that would search for the literature? Then screen and select. After searching uh, the uh, literature, you have to download the papers. Then you have to screen. Uh, probably you may uh, download 500 article that, but that cannot be relevant. Then you have to screen properly. Then you have to decide. Maybe the the based on the inclusion exclusion criteria, probably 50, 60, you will be able to download them. Synthesize the data. That's the sixth door. Sixth uh, step is you have to synthesize the data which you collect from the entire article because you have followed the certain methodology. Then you have to synthesize. Uh, you, there is a separate method. What are the data you need to extract? For example, sample size and the methodology, findings, conclusion. So in this parameter only you will extract the data. Finally, that is seventh step is providing the conclusion so uh, right from the step one to sixth step then finally you will have the data you have to synthesize finally you have to present the conclusion what is the outcome of the, uh, this particular systematic literature review so you have to follow this seven steps to conduct this systematic literature review i will show you an example uh, of a topic then how to do that in the systematic literature review. and i'll show you the original SLR paper, that is Systematic Literature Review paper also. Come, let's get started. And, uh, uh, yeah. Just a minute, I'm opening, yes. So this one already I've told you that the seven step, this is question, inclusion, exclusion criteria, search, select, extract data, synthesis, finding, report, research that we have discussed. Now here I have taken an example of the impact of digital tools in teaching at the tertiary level. That's systematic literature review on the impact of digital tools in teaching at the tertiary level. With practical steps to create review process I have given. First thing, research question. What is the research question here? What is the impact of digital tools on teaching effectiveness and student learning outcomes at the tertiary level? Here I have two, given three sub questions. How do digital tools affect engagement and participation in tertiary education? Similarly, I have two more questions. So first one, we are clear about the research question. Now let's get into inclusion and exclusion criteria. Inclusion, studies published in the last 10 years only. So we will not, in, we will include only the studies which published in the last 10 years. And studies conducted in higher education, tertiary level, that is college and universities only. And studies that evaluate, measure the impact of specific digital tools on teaching and learning outcomes. Then we select only peer reviewed articles and published only in English language. Exclusion criteria study focused on non tertiary, that is from school level, primary, higher. I said the school level thing we don't consider, that's so okay to 12, we don't consider. Studies lacking quantitative, qualitative data. Without proper data, there is a study we will exclude. And we do not include editorial opinion pieces, papers without empirical evidence. 
third component, searching the data literature, we are going to use these five databases. One is ERIC, Google Scholar, JSTOR, Scopus, IEEE Explorer, and Web of Science. Only we'll use only these five, five databases. Then these are the keywords we are going to use, the keywords which are to be used, digital tools in higher education, impact of technology in teaching, e-learning outcomes in universities, A in tertiary education, LMS impact on student engagement, online teaching tools at the university level, and etc. So keywords you have to decide clearly based on the objective. So this research yields 2000 studies example. Then we need to select from the 2000 and initial screening and selecting studies. What we do that initial screening, we review the titles and abstracts to ensure the relevance to the research question. So first we read the title and abstract. We understand the only relevant thing we'll select. So out of 2000, uh, we have narrowed down to only 500 studies after initial basic screening. Next, full text review. After uh, getting the 500 studies, then we'll go through the entire full text, that skim and scan the full text, uh, detailed review on each of study to ensure it meets the criteria. After this process, we selected only 75 studies that are most relevant and high quality to the uh, research question. Now we are uh, extracting the data on these five, uh, six parameters, sample size, digital tool type, study design, outcome measure. Uh, that's what variables like student engagement, exam scores, teaching satisfaction, returns and rate. These are the outcome we measure. Duration, we take the length only one semester or a full academic year. Challenges and barriers, any reported issues such as technical problem, resistance from faculty. So, uh, based on these parameters, only we are going to extract the data. We don't analyze the rest of the data. Now, synthesizing the finding. After this finding, then we have come to the conclusion. What are the things? Student engagement and participation. We understand that most studies report that digital tools like LMS platforms and collaboration software like Google Workspace, Canvas, improve student engagement and active participation. Online discussion forums and peer review activities are noted for increasing interactivity. And learning outcome studies using AI based platforms, adaptive learning, and interactive process, so improve test score and content retention. Use of virtual labs and simulations in subjects like science and engineering enhance students' practical skills. Challenges limited technology access, some would have noted. That over reliance on digital tools can reduce face to face interaction. Final reporting result, the final summary, what we say the impact of digital tools in tertiary education is predominantly positive with notable benefits in engagement and learning outcomes. Adaptive learning tools and online assessment platforms provide personalized learning paths that improve students' understanding. However, Barriers like inadequate training for instructors and varying levels of technology access remain. So the gap identified is limited long longitudinal studies on the long-term impact of digital tools. None of the study has gone into a uh, long-term study. The need for more research on hybrid models combining in-person and digital learning at the tertiary level. Finally, the recommendation conclusion recommendation. Uh, for educators, digital tools are effective for boosting engagement and learning, particularly when blended with traditional teaching methods. Training for faculty on technology use is essential for maximizing benefit. Our researchers, further studies are needed on the effectiveness of specific tools across different disciplines and long-term impacts on critical thinking and analytical skills. Here I have given the uh, findings in a summary table. From, for example, each each component. What kind of impact, benefit, challenges you have given? For example, I read only one virtual lab, better skill acquisition in science and engineering is a fact. Benefit, it gives hands on factors on digital environment. The challenge is limited availability for all disciplines. So, this SLR framework on digital tools in tertiary education could assist university policymakers and educators understanding effective digital strategies and encourage more informed adoption of technology in academic setting. So this is how one topic is taken. Each step is given, explained to you, and you have to do that. Now we'll show you one more original paper, uh, which I, I have taken it from 
uh, Springer. Look at that. So this is the Springer paper. Teaches digital competences in higher education, a systematic literature. Here you take only the uh, read the literature. These are abstract. So whether what are the criteria have, uh, they used? So here the, the objective is clear. Teaches digital competences in higher education. So the aim, the aim of this research to present systematic review in the literature, of, and then in the, what the uh, source they have used is the above science and scopus to identify and analyze classify published article between the year they have selected is 20, 2000 to 2021 digital competencies and uh, they have used to the SIMAT software in, in, in the analysis the initial research reveals more than 343 articles they have this is what's the uh, screening the article 343 they have selected in English out of which 150 are duplicates when the same it is duplicated that's why it is removed 135 are not related to the topic of the study that also uh, Removed. So finally, uh, the finally 56 articles are obtained and analyzed in them. The results of this particular study reveal the predominance of research that focus on analyzing teachers' self-assessment and reflection of their digital competencies. Teachers recognize that they have a, uh, a low or medium low digital competence, as well as the absence of certain competencies, especially, especially those related to the evaluation of education practice. Despite the multiple studies that address this issue, it is necessary to continue improving research in this area, deepening the assessment of teachers' digital competencies and design on this basis, more practical and personalized training programs that respond to the needs of teachers within the areas. So you can you can clearly see all the seven steps what I have already suggested you to be there in this abstract. This is the full paper. Look at there. These are the keywords. This is the full paper. They are done. And uh, I'll do one thing. This is question one, two, three methodology. This is here exactly they have given what kind of keyword they have used in web of science and the scopus and the results. These are the article published in 2007 to 20. So you look at there in 2008, 9, 10, 11, and all, none of the articles published on the topic. So these are the other chart analysis, everything. So I'll, I'll do one thing. I'll give this link in our uh, video uh, description box. You can download this paper and you can read how, uh, because this is a quality paper and published in Springer Open Access. So this will guide you further how to write your own systematic review. I hope this exhaustive video will be an eye opener to you to write a systematic literature review and watch it again and again. Get enlightened then write your SLR effectively and do a quality research. I will catch you in the next video.